Tonight, a mother and her daughter-in-law are catching up on the streets of Laneja when an opportunistic robber sees sitting ducks. But little did he know that this mother hen was ready with a fighting spirit. Laneja is a predominantly Indian South African suburb in the south of Johannesburg, established during the Group Areas Act. The apartheid regime could not let people's spirit down as the growing population of a displaced people made a home and community in this former military camp. This is where tonight's hero is from. My name is Shamim. I live in Laneja. I'm a resident here. I am a housewife and I love Laneja. I'm very family orientated. I love being with my family. It's weekends, it's always children, grandchildren, they come over. My days are filled because I'm always going to one of either the daughter-in-law's homes or they coming over to us, all the kids and brothers and sisters. We're always going out for dinners. My name is Abu Nisha. I'm a resident of Lanasia. Uh, Shamim and I are close family friends. We've known each other from childhood. Okay, ever since I've known Shamim, she's always been this brave person, uh, a no-nonsense person. Growing up as children, sometimes we'd go to the park and then you find the boys wanting to fight with you and Shamim was our backup. So we were not scared because our bodyguard was there. She's like sort of a, a bull in, a, in butterfly clothing, you know? Uh, yet very sweet and caring and always helping people out. My name is Adila Mula and Shamim has been a loyal client of mine for the past 15 years. I'm a hairstylist and I'm also a founder and principal of a special needs school in Indonesia. I would describe Shamim to be a caring person, cheeky, punctual <laughs> and brave. She always stands up for what she believes in. She takes no nonsense from anyone. She tells you like it is. Yes, I do. I stand up for myself in any situation. I'm not very big built, so I'm a petite little person. But they say dynamite comes in little packages. Well, I have a fond memory of uh, when she walked into my salon and my salon was completely flooded. And, the f and, and she was like smartly dressed in her heels. And she says to me, the first thing she says is, give me a mop and bucket. Another client would have walked away, but not Shamim. She stayed for two hours long and helped me clean up everything. And even though my salon was a mess, she turns around and said, okay, let's do my hair now. Look, basically, um, Laneja is still the same. We still love being here. We still love being surrounded by one another, our mosques, our uh, temples, you know, our culture. And on that day, Shamim fell free to walk in her neighborhood, not knowing danger was just around the corner. The incident happened in August um, 2022. It was just after lunch, at about close to three o'clock. I went to visit some people on Nirvana Drive. And uh, apparently when I called, they weren't at home, but they were on their way. So I waited there. I think it, it would be a risk factor to just walk freely there. Because that actually that is a, a target uh, for a lot of people. It's not the first incident. I did hear stories of where these guys just come across from the felt and do, uh, you know, raw people. So it's not a safe area to be walking at all. The thing I don't like about Indonesia is that you don't have freedom to stand outside your house at night and talk to a friend or park outside their house because you could get confronted by someone or get attacked. Almost feels like we're now living in an open air prison by having all these gates and palisades around us. But then I just noticed this car coming down the road and it happened to me and my daughter-in-law. And uh, when she stopped, I got off the car and I went to go and say hello to her to say, she asked me, what am I doing then? I said, no, I just come to see some people here. And she said, okay, and she was a bit tearful because I think it was a funeral. Shamim has a very good relationship with her daughter in Farzana. They're very close and 
She's good to her daughter in laws. A casual chat in the streets was about to take a turn. And when I looked through the corner of my eyes, I just seen these two guys and I told her, Prasanna, there's um, these two guys coming, you know? And I was thinking, should I just get into the car? But they were too fast for me. And I think the telecom van was reversing. And there was a guy with him that was standing behind this van. So he didn't come in front because he was watching that particular person that was reversing the little van there. So I also thought, where did he go, you know? I just saw them approach me from the back of the vehicle. So I threw the phone and the car keys into her car. Just something, I just felt this heat in my face at the time when I seen him, you know? I already was angry when he was coming towards me. And as he just came, he looked into the car and uh, he said something. I couldn't quite hear, I just heard his voice. And I got so, I think, angry. And I said, no man, you know, like, hey. I just screamed and I said, hey. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot to realize that these two are up to something. After the break, will Shamim fight or take flight? Here's a clue, she doesn't run. We're getting robbed, you know? And I just want to do something about it. Shamim Kaji and her daughter-in-law are having a chat in their neighborhood, but they're about to be attacked in broad daylight. Unfortunately, this is a scene that is becoming the norm in the thriving community of Lanasia. White Mabaso from GVK Security has his hands full managing crime in Lens. My name is White Mabaso is born under GVK Security. I'm working as a marketing director. We render services from guarding, industrial guarding, retail, sense and in terms of food and baguette, but it's a very good thing. No, we have a better family and we are cooler in terms of the crime rate in lands. House breaking, no progress on the family. Yeah, let's try unemployment rate, drug thing that is within that Lenasia area. He ends up with a high rate of crime. But it started very well, it was a very nice place, but now eight things have changed. You cannot avoid these things. Because Lenasia has grown, the country has changed. We are just bordering off Lenasia with uh, boom gates to keep ourselves safe. But Lenasia has really become a crime spot. Basically, it's very unsafe. On that day, you go to one. Those guys are up and down, up and down. So they are targeting whatever they are targeting. Bambona, a ringy bell with the eye. These boys noticed with the motor in a value of my first day in the AF. So Ushaman was supposed to be very alert. May I have any safety? You should have. I'm getting more to any. Back out the Naram Dow Cock and I have a Lama first day. People do feel very unsafe right now in this area. People are not so free to live anymore. It's they just get into the house and they, they rob you, and there's nothing you can do. I have been a victim. Uh, overall, I've been hijacked. Uh, I was taken with my car. I, I was driven out of Lanasia. I actually begged them to throw me out of the car. And it was like uh, at night and it was really scary, but uh, at least I got off the car and I let them take the car. The second incident I had is when I was coming out of the shop and I was walking with my bag out of the fishery and this guy was just randomly looking for a few coins, I think, got the opportunity, grabbed my bag and he ran. I remember giving my friend the fish parcel in my car keys and I chased him, but I fell flat on my face. Oshaman Valley was caught off guard. Why in the melee first day in Ganyi? Matuai come and no one would say Matuai. So these guys, born a buy, born an easy target. They can capitalize. Whatever they can grab from Ulushamen, whether it's a phone or wallet or whatever, Bonabaya was with my Everything went 
just too quick. This guy just came from nowhere. I threw the stuff in the car and he was just there. And the next thing, I looked at my daughter-in-law through the corner and I saw she froze. Yeah, I was more worried of my daughter-in-law in that car than anything else. Furzana is the type of person who's quiet, timid, introverted, and I don't think Fazana would have known how to react in the situation. And immediately, I didn't even give him a second, but he had already picked the phone up from the seat. So he wasn't going to go away so easily. He could have just stayed there and just carried on robbing us till we took everything. Like probably my daughter-in-law's wedding rings, the phone, the laptops, whatever else there was in the car for him to take, and then walked off like nothing happened. So I had to get him out of there. Uh, to me, it seemed like Shamim, it was more about protecting her daughter-in-law then she didn't really care about what was going to happen to her. Her motherly instincts kicked in and she attacked her attacker to protect her daughter-in-law. He was sitting and looking at her and she was looking right into his face and it's a very scary situation for her. And the mama bear came out of the unassuming auntie. I got so angry, I don't know. I just had this anger like, you know, you're not gonna do this. He was tall, he was a tall guy, you know? But when he was in there, you know, when I went from the behind him to actually get hold of that hoodie, I didn't actually think of his size or anything like that. I just needed to get him out of the van. That was my intention that, hey, you're not going to do this. And, and I got hold of that hoodie and I started to pull him out of the van. In fact, I was disappointed the hoodie came loose because I actually had the intention of throwing him on the wall, but, uh, I, you know, he shrugged me off. In retaliation, I was in the hospital. 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 Yo, lo mama, so much crack. Did you see that tugging action? That is definitely a mom move. And thanks to her daughter-in-law for reasoning with her because this mother hen was not going to let these guys go. On the other side of this, Shamim is not done with her job as a bimba warrior and mourns the decline of the place she calls home. Shamim Kaji, a 60-something-year-old Lanesia woman, is caught off guard by two clevers. But the streetwise mama shows the boys a thing or two when she fights back with vigor the criminals flee the wrath of Auntie Shamim, but he's not ready to let them go. And then he did this and then I realized that, oh, he has some firearm in his hand, but it looks so small like a toy gun, you know? I hesitated a bit and then I chased him again. I was looking around for a brick or something. I know that, you know, so I could pick it up and chase him or something. The way he ran after he took the phone, like he's got something, you know, a little something to run with. But my daughter-in-law started to scream and opened the door and said, just get in the car. But uh, because of her, I just went in because she was really, really, really shaken up. I think they are under the influence of this drug thing. Because a normal somebody cannot just smash and crack. So Lavabantu Abasena Nembeza, their consciousness has died. So they can do anything. So I won't encourage uh, people to behave that way. Go back, put life first. I was lucky, you know, that he didn't pull the trigger had it been a, right, uh, a real gun. I was very lucky in that sense. I wouldn't ask anyone to do what I did. At the end, I was safe and my daughter-in-law was safe. That was the main thing. After the guys ran off, we then drove. She told me to get into the vehicle and we drove up the road. I went back there to the house to tell everyone that this is what took place and they were like shocked. I said, do you know this gentleman? I told the gentleman sitting in the in the telecom van that you were not aware what was going on. And he said, no, ma'am, I just thought they were standing there or they were begging or looking for a few coins, you know? And then I drove straight to the police station first. I reported the incident. The police said that randomly they do these things and where do you go find them, you know? Where do you go find them? We were gonna meet later that day and I was wondering, I was waiting for her, you know? And obviously later that day, I went to go and see her to give her some moral support. 
Yet she puts up this, she put up this brave front, but I know she mean well, I could see deep inside, she's scared. My daughter-in-law was obviously telling everyone and phoning everyone and telling them that um, uh, she got robbed, you know, so. <laughs> my daughter-in-law was actually, um, I, she's a very soft, sweet little girl, you know. She's a very calm, collected person, and she's not one that will just react to anything. So I think she's like blocked it out of her mind, or she doesn't want to recall it, or she doesn't even want to share how she felt at that moment, but it really took, uh, it affected her a lot. It did. Her son's reaction to the incident was, I think they were more upset uh, that Shamim fought back with the guy. Obviously, because I mean, you know, to them it's like my mother could have got shot or she could have got harmed and so they would have preferred her rather just not fighting back and telling them, take what you want and standing back, yeah. After watching the incident that, happened, that took place on that day, I felt really angry. I felt upset because it is people that I know in my neighborhood. This incident took place two streets away from me. So I felt it is really unfair that two women cannot be having a conversation in broad daylight without being attacked. So when the video started trending on social media, to her it was like a, a lesson for a lot of other women. We don't always have to be targets because we're women. With the video trending on social media, I definitely think that was a good thing because a lot of awareness was created about what can happen to you and that women or anybody should be more alert. So once a lot of time had passed, it definitely had a great impact on her. You know, you become, she was more paranoid, like kept telling me also lock the door, lock the door, watch this guy, she keeps his brave friend, but um, I think it, it mentally, it does affect one, you know, when you go through any sort of crime. What I now do is I'm constantly on my grandchildren and my children's backs and they don't like it, but you know, we just say, please be careful if they're going to the mall, please be careful if you're coming back home. So it's like a new thing now to be just, you know, on your guard all the time. No lies there, Auntie Shamim. And I think Mzansi will agree with me when I say, you have done your fair share and then some serving your community. She actually put herself at risk and tried to save her daughter-in-law's life as well. She did definitely deserves to be called a hero because she's brave and strong. I was impressed by this woman's bravery to fight back. When I saw Shamim grabbing the guy by his hoodie and smacking him, I was speechless because Shamim is really small, built and tiny and for a woman at her age, to have so much of strength in her, wow, I, I was blown away. She's definitely a superhero in our eyes. Lena, on her own, I respect her. Lena and Zayo, even those uh, smaller thoughts, they know about her now, and they respect her. So I'm more in the near future of the Bandale, we are. My hope for Lanesia is I wish we can have the old times where we were free to walk in the streets, free to play, you know, where our children can play in the streets. You know, we can have the freedom of moving around safely and without being afraid. I hope that can come back to that one day. My hope for Lanesia is just that we can have peace of mind in a crime-free community. It can become this beautiful community where you are free to walk around, walk the streets, go to the library, go to the parks with your children and enjoy the afternoon. So my hopes are that a community should start playing more of a role. Youth groups, uh, neighborhood watches. So also that could also help like uh, a lot of unemployment in Indonesia, helping poor families. And I think that could also prevent a lot of crime. Yes, in my community, I am a custodian or a watchwoman. But um, I also, when at night I hear anything, I phone alarm net. I think they're so tired of me. When they see my number, they must be saying, oh no, it's her again, you know? So I'm more alert and I take the opportunity where everyone fights with me that, why don't you just go sleep? And I said, no, I can't because I heard something. I need to go investigate it. And my whole family actually don't like that, especially my sons. <laughs> They just feel I should mind my own business. <laughs>
A true hero you are indeed, Shamim. They say not all heroes wear capes, but you, Shamim, you let your cape fly high and continue to be the warrior you are in your daily life. Now, Laneja is not the only community that is plagued with intensified criminal activity. Be it in the burbs or Godika Singh, we are all under siege with criminals in our midst. But there are more responsible ways in which the community of Lens can deal with this from Malume White. Oh, Shamim Ngati. Uh, bravery, okay. I didn't go. 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 I Oh, you are a pedestrian, hambang a moto, Ungahambi Unji Unga to Ufama or Lap, Ubonaja and Bong or Ubeda. Keep yourself alert at all times. Anything I suggest a training of some sort to, to community. Within the Master of Amsadna, the SAPS, the CPF community forum, then Singawas, would see similar more workshop of some sort so that people might know. The awareness with every time has always been added. So it learns since of these petty crimes that are, are taking place. They've tried to with Bavale in Dao, with the farmer from Gate, with Mount Lula Lapa, Yabona Yaksa, Seko Easy. So Massing Abamba, Sung Parat, Sung I let down the land. And no bigger truth was said. It takes a village to keep the village safe. Remember, motu ke motu kabatu. And also, if you're going to have the nerve to step up to someone's hood right up their front yard, gun in hand, you better know what you're doing or you will be jumping for your life. Basopatsoti, wrong house. <laughs>